Welcome, I'm Brian Dijek with Scott Subaru here, the world's first passive house car dealership located in Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. We're midpoint between Edmonton and Calgary and we thank you for coming out to have a look at what we've done uh, in the interest of passive house being more efficient and providing excellent experience and environment for our clients to interact in. So you're walking into a space that is passive house certified. There's our certificate, shows our energy consumption usage to maintain a uh, environment that is comfortable and uh, really welcome to work in and come work every day. We have a cutaway of how the building is put together. The building is constructed fairly simply with a lot of attention to detail. With the passive house, you want to keep all of your energy that you desire to heat the space or to cool the space within the building. So it's built within a two-stage wall with a cavity in the middle to allow your services to run in between. On the outside we have a Luca Bond uh, architectural siding followed by some rock wool. Then we have our exterior vapor barrier and that is pretty typical of any house. And then we have what is most important, our Intello blanket. And that completely wraps the building and allows us to maintain the desired heating or cooled air energy circulating through the space. Within the uh, wall, we have post-consumable organic material, so recycled newspaper, magazine. And then on the inner wall, we have just a standard bat insulation followed by drywall. All of that is laid on a foundation that's insulated. The foundation here is anywhere from 24 to 48 inches thick. It is a R42 insulation under the slab. We have an R63 wall set and an R126 roofing insulation on an inverted membrane. So what we're standing on right now is greater R value, R42, than most homes have in, you know, in North America and Canada. People ask us, which is harder to do? Is it harder to heat the building or harder to cool it? And actually in the summertime, it's much more difficult for us to keep this place cool because of the thermal load coming from the Southwest exposure where we get most of our sunshine. So we have triple pane uh, inert gas filled windows with reflective blinds that keep the heat up. And in the winter time, once everything's rolling in here, the recovery times for this heating spaces are relatively small because most of the items that you see in this space are actually contributing to the heat load in the winter time. When we started this journey building a passive house, we had a lot of these number crunching guys in Germany nerding out over the numbers trying to say like, we need to know more information. How many times do your doors open a day? How many people do you have working in the space? How many TV monitors do you have? How many printers? We needed to know this because all of these devices like this 88 inch TV monitor helps us actually maintain the heat in the space. We do have supplementary heat like a fireplace that we can put on if we find our clients are feeling a chill. But for the most part, things that are in the space help maintain the, the relative comfort of that air energy in, in that particular location. Right. The building is put together in three modules. We're standing in the first module. It houses our offices as well as our showroom and our service area. The second module is our repair shop and then we have a service drive through and that's a smaller space which has a greater recovery time needed because that space is open to the elements. Let's head over to that space. Welcome to our service drive. This is a good example of how the building is constructed in a modular fashion. We want to control the environment in each node, and it's much easier to do that when you have three separate spaces. So if you look over here, you'll see a wall that's nearly 48 inches thick because there's two sets of walls for that module to be connected to the next one. So you're actually looking at two of our modules put together. Each space has been dissected by the passive house guys that are crunching the numbers to determine what energy requirements are for that uh, particular space. We've asked for about 18 to 20 degrees year round in here and the heat pumps and the uh, HRVs actually will maintain that um, through their software and their uh, swag on uh, device platforms. One of the things about having a, a nice swag on unit as your HRV, we have three of them, is that the air is always of excellent quality. You know, I have seasonal allergies. I have 
you know, no problems in this building. As soon as I go to our building next door that was built in 1968, I'm constantly revving my eyes and sneezing. We do have a exhaust gas detection system and makeup air that will kick in if, if it gets to a point, the alarm will go on and we'll be notified. Um, mentioning earlier the little, the little heat pumps that we have in here, um, about every 30 minutes to 60 minutes, we'll have a 0.46 CFM air exchange. So the damper will open, it'll draw in fresh air, it'll come down through here, it'll be mixed with the energized air that's already here, it'll get filtered and it'll go into this heat pump. In the winter time, you'll get warm air coming out of it. In the summertime, like we are now, you can feel you've got air conditioning right here. So these little little guys throughout the dealership, I believe there's 27 of them, they help maintain the space and relatively quiet. You don't hear anything kicking in, you don't get any big swings in temperature. Very, very comfortable to, to work in. The biggest thing is making sure like in the wintertime when it is minus 40 degrees Celsius outside with the wind, that we can give this space enough time to, to actually recover. Uh, part of that is by using Effiflex uh, R27 rated uh, rapid doors. They run off a of Ritec controller. They're super fast. And they'll stay open for 10 seconds while the car goes in. Let's get them all on and take photos. So as you can see, we're in the third module of our Passive House dealership here. This is the shop. Uh, these are the happiest technicians in the world because they get to work in air conditioned shops. So you'll never see anybody really sweating in here unless the boss is in here. Constructed the same as the rest of the dealership and uh, very comfortable, very nice to, place to work in. So in the shop, you'll see our climb event exhaust reels. And what happens is uh, when we have a vehicle that's running in the shop, we'll hook those exhaust vents up to the vehicle. It'll fire a exhaust fan and we'll pull that hot automotive exhaust up into the reel and it gets vented and down and exhaust through the roof through this ducting. Now you'll notice the ducting is not insulated. That's because we get an unrealized heat gain in the winter time. So that engine exhaust, we retain the heat, we get rid of the exhaust it's a benefit for us when it's when we need to heat this space. Um, you'll see the large Swagon HRV. That unit heats this entire space. And then again, we have a couple little heat pumps here like we did in the service drive that help move that energized air throughout the space. All right, so this is one of our smaller uh, Swagon HRVs. Um, bringing cold air in, fresh air in running through the uh, filter, pre-filter it, gets heated by the heating element, post-filter, goes out through the building, energized air throughout, again, gets circulated back, and our little heat pumps here, they help some of the heavy lifting and push the air where it needs to go. A fairly warm day today, so we're gonna find out that this is really hot when we open it, but um, we'll show you an example of what the filters look like we change them usually every spring and every fall, twice a year. Easy job to do. As we come up to this part of the building, it appears that it, it's integrated, but really this is the outside of the building. And you're still outside the building. So we had a requirement to uh, have a 24 hour drop off for our clients. So they can come in any time of day or night, drop their keys in the machine, you know, even if we're closed, pick up a rental car or a loaner car and go off and do their business. Uh, so this space is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And it is actually quite hot in here because it's not a part of the building. In order for us to achieve this, um, the 
the requirement was to not have any thermal bridges. So, you know, we're building this, this construction. It's actually not tying into the existing building. So this is more like a, a exterior vestibule. Once we get to this point, you can see here where the insulation starts um, for the foundation of the building. And once we get in through the threshold, you can see all the doors are gasketed, triple pane, and that gives us that energy barrier. The calculations to ascertain what your energy values are, are very complex, but when we're building this, it's not superly complicated. You have to pay attention to details. You can't have any unmetered air leaks throughout the building. So our poor contractor, he was always walking around with a roll of tuck on his belt making sure that there's a poke in the intel and he's patched it up right away. He was very diligent about that. So I think anybody can achieve a certain level of passive house. Even if you're building your own house, you don't have to do it all. But the energy savings and the occupancy benefits are huge. Well, thank you for visiting Scott Subaru here at Red Deer, Alberta, the world's first passive house car dealership. Uh, it was great to be able to share this space with 475 and share our experience with you. I know you have many clients that are going to be, whether it be residential, personal, or commercial business, looking to gain the benefits of interacting with a company like yours that can put them in touch with all of the things they need to go on their passive journey. And, you know, the energy savings, the efficiencies that we've gained, and the quality of living or the quality of working in such a building is fantastic. Thanks again.